All right, folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every Wednesday, we talk to Teddy at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, it's Fed Day. Good morning. It's fr it's freezing Fed Day in Chicago. It's minus five degrees here. Minus five. Uh, and, and, and what do you guys got, like a 25-mile-an-hour wind out there for a, a yeah. feels like – Feels like temperature uh, negative 35, right? Yeah, we have a wind chill warning until like noon, 1 o'clock today. So, yeah, Stay it's cold. warm, man. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I know we're spoiled in Florida, man. That's why I live here on Monday, Teddy, though. I woke up, and uh, it was 34 degrees in Florida, and my car, driving the kids to school for the first time, <laughs> it, uh, was covered in ice. And I had to sit wow. there and explain how most people across the country, as we sat there in the car for five <laughs> minutes, uh, have to warm up their cars because I didn't have an ice chipper in my car. I know, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> I was just covered, man. So anyway, um, but we're back to like 50. But stay warm because that's a different kind of cold up there once you get below, as we all know. So speaking of cold, speaking of hot, we got some hot markets, man. We got a hot oil market. Where do you want to kick things off? Well, let's talk about the oil market. So we, yeah. we're coming off a nice little uh, higher move low from a couple sessions ago, and we're right Oof. below that that high that we made. Uh, what was it last week? So I think we're gonna, you know, pierce it higher. Now, are we gonna accelerate in a big way? I think we're gonna keep the trend going. I, can't, I you know, that hundred dollars has been a target of mine. You know, I still think we're gonna go way beyond that over the course of the next year, year and a half, especially with the geopolitical things that are going on right now. I mean, I can't see how it wouldn't. You know, I mean, the reality is. United uh, States oil supplies now are at the lowest levels they've been in decades, you know, so we're this is not a good thing whatsoever. Sure. You know, so unless consumption and demand starts to really significantly drop in this country, which would mean we'd have to have lockdowns, which wouldn't be good for anyone. Um, I can't see how uh, the oil doesn't go much higher, you know, so and it's definitely gonna, you can see that, we you know, we've been talking now for weeks about the divergence in the currency markets. The dollar index obviously has been pressing higher for the past couple days, especially since we talked last week, you know, but it's a mixed bag of goods. You know, it's it depends on which currency you're looking at. So um, I'm bullish on oil. I can't see anything right now in the forecast. I mean, uh, what, do you, what think, do you think that Putin all of a sudden is going to turn on the pipes and start uh, supplying the world with more oil to help suppress the price of oil right now? I don't think that's happening, you know. So yeah. the OPEC OPEC can do everything that they want. If you let's say OPEC came out today and said we're going to try and just really really help the world out and blah blah blah, which we know they they would never do that anyhow. But let's say that they did, um, that would not make put a dent into the world supply right now. It just wouldn't, you know. Especially with as far as how the supply chains are going as well to move the oil, you know. So. The conditions are totally ripe. We have also the Fed, um, which is now coming into play. You know, uh, is is Powell going to do anything today? Uh, I think odds are pretty pretty minimal that they're going to do something today. I think it's going to be more Fed speak. I mean, you got to realize that they're still trying to make America believe that inflation is only running at seven percent. You know, so <laughs> you know if and you go with if you go with their narrative, then there's no reason to press rates too quickly. For one. Um, that's just the way I see it. Now, we know that Goldman and some other forecasters are now saying there'll be upwards of seven, eight hikes, you know, over the course of the next year or two. Well, obviously, we're at the bottom. So the only way we can go is up, you know, right now, you know. And as far as the way we're dealing with things and, it's, and the way it looks like they're going to deal with it, it's going to be a slow progression. You know, we don't have a Volcker Fed chairman, you know, who would be willing let alone yeah. have the, have the foresight to say hey you know um this you know when you're when you're looking at, at trying to just when you have an overheating economy or something like that when you're just, when you're only using rates in a quarter point basis to kind of cur curtail things whether it's rising or cutting rates that's one thing, but we're in a situation where we've been at the bottom for a long time, relatively speaking, for interest rates. Even if we were to have a two-point raise over the course of the next year, that would still have us at relatively historically low rates. You know, so I mean, as far as the the fantasy that you know all of a sudden the sky is going to cl collapse, you know, because rates go up, well, it's not going to happen just because we go up one or two percent. And the Fed is by no means going to raise it five, six percent over the next year or two, you know, to shock the markets. That I don't know if you were listening to the segment before you came on, but we had a great call, Jose from Lakeland, and you're just talking about mm -hmm. interest rates, and it's kind of what I was talking about in terms of like I don't see a huge impact 
if it's 1%, 2%, we're at such a low level, you know, you're still going to have, maybe you have the retail mortgage uh, applicator, maybe, you know, if yields are going higher, maybe investors aren't. Either way, the point mm -hmm. was, you know, it's not a substantial change to the market when you're at such low interest rates. Yeah, if interest rates go up to 9% right. and the 30-year mortgage is 10%, sure. of course, that's going to hurt housing prices, but not where we are. Right. And I'll say to... Just agree, man, in terms of the surprise nature of all these, you know, maybe people are talking about a 50 basis point. It's not just Chairman Powell, Teddy, and whether you agree or not, most analysts are saying, you know, and I always say going with the hikes, but that, that all of this is going to wane in the next year. So if most people are saying it on Wall Street, why is he going to freak everybody out with a 50 basis point right. cut? Um, right. I mean, hike. I have to get hike, hike in my head now. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know. Um, so, so I kind of agree, you know, and, and that doesn't mean, though, that things don't change in the next three, sure. six, nine months. Because I think if it sure. becomes undeniable to the point that if we go, we're now at the point, you can't go three years post pandemic, I think. You know what I mean in terms mm -hmm. of the next year? Because everything was, we've now overcome, over Omicron peak it looks like, uh, and hopefully life resumes. I don't see the chance for those shutdowns. So if everything's supposed to calm down in the next year and it doesn't, then you know I think we might be in for a little bit of an accelerated aspect of that. I tell you what, can you hang with us, Teddy, for the break? Sure. Okay, yeah. we're going to go to a break, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more of the actual, uh, some of those Forex pairings. Sure. we got the S&Ps. We're up 66 points right now, trading up 1.5% at 44.14. We uh, Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Teddy. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad from forex-trading-unlock.com. Uh, so, Teddy, we had the dollar index up a little bit pre-market. It's pulled back a bit. I have a chart of the dollar yen up here. We have some positive action. We're up to 114.34. Uh, I know a lot of our listeners love tracking that yen, especially uh, dollar yen with the gold action. Um, what do you think of this action today even or, or as we base it around 114 right now down from 116 to start the year in the end? Oh, I love it. You know what? It's, it's kind of funny because it's Fed Day. The interest rate markets is pretty dead. Um, I would expect most of the markets to be dead except for those that are obviously because of earning releases in the stock market. Sure. Uh, but most of the currencies, I don't think you're going to see very much movement in today. You'll see a little bit, but uh, the U.S. dollar yen absolutely is the one mover that we got going on today. Uh, it's been firm for most of the morning. Um, as we're talking right now, I think, yeah, it's making new highs right sure now. Is. Yeah. So and and the nice thing is we're coming off of a new low that was set a couple days ago. Now it, it we I am viewing this as a correction that we're viewing right now, and now we are at the beginning of a turn back to the upside. Um, when you look at um, besides the global tensions, the oil we just spoke about, and also the interest rate factor with the Fed, I can't see how you wouldn't see the U.S. dollar yen rebound up towards the highs that we were looking at just a couple weeks ago. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm bullish. I've been bullish for a long time, so it's not just a personal thing; it's a technical, fundamental thing. I think you're going to see a lot of potential movement there, and there's. There's also a couple other indicators where you can see this. You know, um, if, I always say the market is the best indicator for the markets, especially in real time. So if you compare, like, for instance, like the Australian dollar right now is up versus the dollar today, okay? The U.S. dollar yen, the, the, excuse me, the yen is the one that's down. But the Australian dollar yen cross is actually looking for a sell signal right now, you know? So that shows that there's a lot of divergence, once again, that I'm talking about. And you shouldn't see this kind of trade setup going on because um, Australian dollar right now, obviously with the lockdowns, we all know that things are much more severe and restrictive down there. It made a lower, it made a nice little bounce, you know, but as you can see, like the New Zealand dollar really is starting to, to wane. So if that part of the world continues to weigh heavily in the bears, I think you're going to see a lot of bulls hit the end for sure. All right, man, it's going to be up. We got markets market straight and high right into this. We're up 75 points in the S&P. Teddy, I can't wait to find out where we are a week from today, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. 122 in the end. Let's see it. I love it. We'll find out 122. Stay tuned, folks. Uh